Hello and welcome to the Future of Hidden Movie Gems podcast. I'm your host, Ty Christensen. What is the most you ever lost in a coin toss? Um, we've got Jordan Christensen on the pod. Call it. I don't understand, sir. Call it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, oh my god. Gosh, we should just quote that whole scene. And we've got Cameron Mickle on the pod. You don't have to do this. People always say the same thing. What do they say? They say you don't have to do this. You don't. Okay. <laughs> I love, uh, what did he say? He's like, his whole conversation with that gas tenant. I can't get over it. The whole scene is probably one oh, of my oh, favorites. And he, when That's... he's like, <clears throat> so you married, <laughs> you into, married it. into it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it too when he's like, so where are you coming from, friend? And he's like, what business is of yours where I'm going? Friendo. <laughs> like, he's like, oh, you have the Texas license plate. And he's like, what business is, of, is it of yours? And, oh, I just freaking Or do. try when like, he like crinkles that little piece of paper and is like. You like, have the little wrapper and it's like. <laughs> just, <laughs> like I can feel that tension. Just. Oh my gosh, guys. I would say, guys, I, I'm going to say it outright. You're hearing it on the pod. This bumped out some other movie on my top 10 list. This is in my top 10 list movie of all time. It just did it. I, it was in my top 20 for sure, but when we made the first original top 10, it had been a while since I seen New Country, and I watched it again all the way through, because I actually go back and watch scenes from this movie all the time, along with all scenes from Coen Brother films. I go back and watch scenes from... Um, one of my favorite comedies, dark comedies. Fargo? The uh, No, not Fargo. Well, I mean, I go back and watch scenes from Fargo, too, but I always watch scenes from uh, Burn After Reading. I watch, like, oh, all any, kinds of weird scene scenes. The Brad car Pitt. scene with John Malkovich and Brad Pitt. The scene with... Um, Anything with Brad Pitt in that movie. In the closet with George Clooney. With Brad Pitt. I, I go back and watch those all the time. That yeah. face. I can't believe you didn't give me the money. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that one, too. But, guys, we are discussing... A masterpiece. This movie is No Country for Old Men. This movie came out in 2007. Holy cow, it feels like a lifetime ago. This movie stars... Uh, well, first, it was directed by Joel and Ethan Cohen, the Cohen brothers. Uh, it was written by Joel and Ethan Cohen, and uh, Cormac McCarthy also uh, wrote the novel, which is what this bo- uh, it's a book adaptation of. It stars Tommy Lee Jones. Who's the more powerful duo, the Cohen brothers or the Nolan brothers? The Nolan Oh, uh, well, I would just argue that the Joel and Ethan Cohen do just because they've done more stuff. They have a much more robust catalog than Christopher Nolan. I think they've just been around longer. But uh, consistent hits. Although Nolan and, and Jonathan, Christopher and Jonathan have plenty of time to uh, keep racking up because they, they're, they're like batting at 100 you know, 110 or whatever the, the good batting average is. See, I don't know. I don't batting average is a thousand. They're batting it out of the park. Yeah, batting average is a thousand. They're, they're doing awesome. So this movie stars Tommy Lee Jones, who plays like this. Should only be Tommy Lee Jones's roles from here on out. It's the county sheriff. He's the best county sheriff I think we've ever had in a movie before. Like I think of like Fugitive, and I think about Men in Black. Like he is that guy. Like if you want to talk about typecast, please only put him in this role from here on out because I watch any movie that stars Tommy Lee Jones as a sheriff or detective or a policeman. So good. A police chief. Uh, it stars Javier Bardem, which is the second most terrifying human individual on planet Earth that I would be actually scared to meet in real life. That and Jack Nicholson. Those are the only two actors that scare me in real life. Wendy, life and life of life. Like, <laughs> like that guy scares me. Like, Jack Nicholson's like, wait a minute, get a load of me. Like, he's so creepy. Um, love him, though. People say I'm not very friendly. That's my best Jack. Nicholson impression. Um, it stars Josh Brolin. I always forget Woody Harrelson is in this fetching movie. <laughs> Woody Harrelson is in it. Kelly McDonald. Garrett uh, Dillahunt, which I remember from that TV show Joy and the movie Looper. That's all I know him from. He's the other county de- uh, sheriff that helps Tommy Lee Jones. It's got Tess Harper, Barry Corbin, and other p- funny friends and faces. I can't forget Beth Grant, who does the scary woman. She's always doing the scary uh, woman routine. She's in a lot of great things. Beth Grant, just just look her up. She's that scary woman and uh, Donnie Darko, she's the, well, she's not the scary woman, she's the teacher. Shove it in my <laughs> <laughs> She was in Speed, the one woman that dies on the bus. I, I'll never forget her. Yeah, so. she got destroyed in Speed. She got destroyed in Speed. <laughs> so guys, this movie, No Country for Old Men, Let's get into it. What was it like watching this movie for the first time and rewatching it for the podcast? Don't say that word. Let's start with. <laughs> let's have Cameron. You start. I already started a ring. Don't say that word. <laughs> <laughs> watching it for the first time, unlike these uncultured swine, Ty 
Jordan and Grant. I loved it the first time I watched it. I was like, whoa, slow down, slow down. No, don't you dare say that. I was confused by the ending. Didn't mean I didn't love the movie. I was just thrown for a loop. I was like, wait, I didn't understand the ending. So to be fair, I, w- and I was disappointed by the ending, but I loved the movie. Sorry, just I had to make that clear. Ties and culture. <laughs> anyway, and um, uh, Grant me. Grant hated it. But so I watched it my first time. Yes. I watched it with Jordan, and Jordan was just like watching my face the entire time. Like any reaction, he was just like, "Oh my gosh!" Just like watching my face, everything I saw, and holy cow! Like yeah, first time I watched, it, I was just blown away by the performance. Um, and then rewatching it, I was a little nervous. I don't know, but just because I feel like majority of this movie kind of hangs on that suspense. Of just not knowing what's going to happen. But, man, it still held up. Holy shiz. And it even went up higher on my list. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It did for me, too. Watching it today. That's just the writing is just beautiful. And the characters. I love. Oh, so Cohen. So Cohen brother-esque. Like, just their characters. And just the <laughs> stupid characters that I just have. They just, like, you You can know everything about them with 30 seconds of screen time. Like, yeah, I know exactly who this guy is, like, in 30 seconds of screen time. That's excellent. Jordan, how about you? Watching it for the first time or rewatching it for the pod? Um, so the first time, I mean, I guess it makes me uncultured to not like it. I don't think so, but I'm joking. I just oh, okay. Gosh, Jordan's like, oh, I'm I'm not uncultured. Yeah, Jordan, baby, uh, holy cow. No, 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 no. You, no I'm Jordan, just, you two oh rip into me for days, and then I say one thing to clap back, and Jordan's like, I guess I'm uncultured. All I'm saying is <laughs> no. What what I'm saying is uh, there's a lot of like famous films like. The first time I watched it, like Wolf of Wall Street, uh, Departed, this movie that I watched the first time, and I'm like, I liked oh my all gosh, of them my first time. These are really depressing or dark or depraved, and it's just like it. It's it felt so like I just had a gross feeling walking out of it. I'm like, uh, like it's hard to walk away with this, like because all the people die, and so it's like, wow, like this is a very dark movie. <laughs> So I just, I hadn't seen that so much because, you know, growing up, we just watched so many happy ending movies. And so seeing this is just... <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> it kind of breaks that. Anyway, so the first time it just... <laughs> just imagine us growing in a home where it's like, mom and dad are like, does it meet the Hayes Code? <laughs> <laughs> Do the bad guys get their comeuppance? Uh, okay. And so, yeah, but rewatching it, <laughs> obviously love it now. And I, I've shown many people and... It's just funny that Cameron says that because I was the one who introduced it to you. So I know that's why. I, that's why I think it is funny. That's why you're like, it, it is funny. I'm no, it, not it is. no, and Cameron. To be fair, I think it helps when you have someone like like we know each other so well. When I recommend a movie to you two, I know pretty well how you're going to react to it and if you're going to like it for the most part. Like. Like, even Nick Cage, like, the movies that we recommend to you, Cameron, I was like, I think it's 50-50 that Cameron actually likes or vibes with the movie. But I love when we, like, talk about them, and it's like, oh, yeah, like, it's 50-50. Like, half the people like it, half don't. So I'm not surprised that our, our podcast Well, and you can about, understand like, why people like it. It's the, that's yeah. the interesting, fun part, too. Exactly, exactly. Like, like when, when I first saw this movie... I can't even remember why or when. I think it was one of those ones that Rich owned, right? Yeah. When was the first time we watched it? Yeah, that's when I saw it the first time. He owned it, and I remember watching it at his place and being like, oh, my gosh, like, the beginning just didn't let up. I was like, I really like this. It's like like a Western, but modern-day Western. Loved it. And I love Westerns, and that's why I didn't have to tell, you know, it didn't take me long. But I was shocked at the very end where I almost, I actually missed, to be completely honest. I missed Josh Brolin's ending. I didn't realize that was him. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was just I didn't some know other he was guy. Killed. Grant, Grant didn't know that I had either. no idea it was him. Grant's like, wait, what exactly. happened to Justin Brolin? And I was like, oh, he died. And yeah. You're like, like, you didn't yeah, see him dead? Yeah, and you're like, that was the guy. Yeah, you didn't see him dead. I'm like, oh, that was him. Because I actually went back and found out because I, it, it just blew over me. Like, I, I expected that I, it would be this big thing. And then, like, at the end, when you realize what the whole movie's about, what Joel and Ethan Cohen are saying, it's like, holy cow, like, it introduced this whole world of movies to me. Because that's what Grant I watched it. this pretty. Yeah, and, and to be fair, I think Grant would really like it on rewatch. I think he really yeah. would. I think, just like I did, I love this movie more now watching it. I, it, I think it gets this movie better. Is a I, it's a I didn't think it was movie. possible, yeah. but yes. this movie gets better well, think, the more I think it's just hard because on the first watch, it just subverts, subverts your expectations so much because it's like Zodiac in the way of like being very true, kind of to like almost like the police's point of view, except it doesn't even do what Zodiac does and doesn't even give you like the, this is most likely what we've ha- what happened, what we've heard. It's just like, oh, it happened. Like, you, it, all you see is from the cop's, like, point of view, and you just never see the things go down, like, almost ever, and it's just, like, it's wild. Yeah, like, you missed the first shootout, like, right? I think a less skilled director would have had, like, the opening 
drug scene gone wrong and then Josh Brolin st- stumbling upon it. But it almost plays as a slow, creeping noir where, like, Josh Brolin, it's very calm, it's very and quiet. Ty- like, he even stumbles upon a guy that's still alive and he's like, water, you know. Like, that's it's not the very opening sc- scene. The opening scene is him. No, no, no. Using- it's, not, it's not the opening Okay, but I'm curious, Ty, scene. did you know what yeah, that yeah. was? I had no idea the first no. time. I'm like, no. I, hadn't, I didn't the know how they cow killed cows. Decompre- yeah, no. Oh, so the air like compressor? That, yeah. Yeah, it's an air compressor. I was like, what? Blows out a jet of air so powerful. I love it too. Like, like he's like. Please hold still. Yeah. Would you just hold still for me for a moment? What is that thing? And he just puts it right up to his head, and <laughs> it just blows up. It is so mind-boggling. Javier Bardem is such a scary or person. In this you mean film. mind-blowing? It's so <laughs> mind-blowing. <laughs> Was he fishing oh around God, for the bullet out out of his head? I don't want to think about that. <laughs> see, I like, I gotta see, say that he a quote like that, you role. just you just know everything about that character. Freaking writing, man. Yeah, it, he disappeared in this role, dude. He was so scary. That bull cut, he looks like he's a handsome chap, and he looks terrifying and he ugly. Looks like, in this movie. He looks like a manic baby. <laughs> <laughs> so scary, man, with that bowl cut. Like you, like, you look like you're si- like you're six years old. And your mom just gave you a bull haircut, and you have like an air compressor. Dude, the face he's making when he's strangling that poor cop, I. This movie's terrifying. I mean, it's a terrifying... Oh, the boot, like the boot marks. Thriller. Oh, I, yes. The, the pan down from the guy when he had scraped it. So we're just going to get right into this movie. Like, I love this film. I, I think I like it more on rewatch, which is one of my favorite things about it. And my second thing is, I think I love just... I think this is one of those movies, if you want to talk about a rewatchable film, I tried to start just scenes of it, and I was like, I'll start part of this. It just flowed, and I could not stop watching. I stayed up way yeah. too late watching this movie, and I watched the whole thing because I just could not stop watching it. This is one of those movies that I, I was so gripped, and I disappear. I forget about acting. I forget about, like, markers, and I, think, I forget about, like, lighting. I just, I literally disappear into this movie, and it's one of those few movies that does that. It I've, just takes you for a I've ride. seen what he sees, and it certainly made an impression on me. <laughs> Ah, uh, gosh, yeah. There are so many cool things I want to talk about in this movie, so I, I just love that. Every time you rewatch it, it's even better. That's a great thing about a movie like this. And and I just get lost in it. I literally get immersed in this movie where I'm not thinking of it as... It just feels so real. It feels <laughs> way too real. So. Looking for a man who has recently drinking milk? <laughs> <laughs> so put on APB about a guy who drink. I love the way they talk, the detective. Uh, we'll get into yes. all that. So, so uh, George, uh, Cameron, what about you? You're two of your favorite things, Cameron. The Coen brothers are very similar to Quentin Tarantino and to where their writing and their directing is so impressive to where they can have an 18-minute scene with essentially nothing happen and I've like I never blink and I like don't look away at all and I'm just like holy shiz this is the most insane thing I've ever seen I'm like and then someone tells me you know it's an 18 minute scene I'm like what the fudge like I think that truly shows great writing to where it's like you don't have to be having explosions and this and that and like I am so lured in like it reminds me of the opening scene in Glorious it's like that movie you just watch that that first scene and you're just like you listening to every single word that he's saying and you're like oh my gosh and then like the transitions and just everything is just so well done and it's the same thing with this movie where every single thing that he says i'm just so on edge because like he's such a wild card and you're like you're like i have no idea what he's going to do like the scene like you, that both you guys quoted uh, how much have you lost in a coin toss i was looking at jordan i'm like what the fuck is he gonna do is he gonna kill him I'm like is he gonna fucking just yeah. murder this dude for like a coin toss i'm like what the fudge is happening? You only got spared because of a coin toss. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. And so it's Holy like things crow. like that that are just like, it makes you so on edge and it's so impressive um, because of the writing. And then um, honestly, my second favorite thing, which I like was surprised. Luckily, Jordan kind of showed me this after like the Great Awakening. Awakening so I already was kind of like knew what like that a lot of, because I've grown because before 17 or before like the great awakening one of my favorite movies ever was transformers 3 the one with the falling <laughs> building because i was just like visually stimulated for fetching three hours yeah no dude dude when you teenagers man why Michael isn't Bay, that movie dude. awesome oh yeah, yeah he, he knows awesome. i, I love the island and now i'm like uh yeah yeah, yeah and won't so, revisit that one yeah and know. so it, it's things like that and then i that's what i'm so glad is because i think this movie benefits so much of just like it's so slow pace and yet like you just feel like the stakes are so Benefit. high that you're like, holy shiz. Like, the stakes, even though they're, like, like it seems like everything's happening so slow, it's just so ridiculous. Everything's so elevated. And you know what's so great? Like, every every bullet gunshot in this movie, like, has an emotional residence with me. Like, 
I don't know if that makes sense. Like, like with all these other movies where there's so many guns firing off, it's just like, I don't care. Like, sometimes yeah. less is more. Yeah, Every it's just time like that, senseless killing. Like, yes. I don't care for and, anybody dying. Yes, and this one, it's like, I don't know anything about this, like, this ranger that picked up Javier Bardem, but he's just so in out of his depth. Even the idea that he didn't know what he was carrying around, he's like, I think he has an oxygen tank for emphysema or something like that. Like, he's so innocent, he has no idea just how murderous Javier Bardem's character is. Like this manic depraved killer and he just like slowly puts the cuffs in front of him so he can strangle him to death. it's so crazy like and well, then it's just... because the coen brothers are so good at writing characters that you know right away what kind of a person that is like the one when he pulled over that first guy that was just asking questions like a nice texan you just knew him like yeah. he, he, how he was dressed yeah. how he was acting oh, the way yeah. he you're talked like, you're like this is one of dad's relatives <laughs> Yeah, like, gets out of his car, like, what's going on, what's that you got in their hand there? He's, like, just very inquisitive, but he's so trusting. Like, he doesn't think anything's off, other than the fact that this is clearly not a police Well, because he officer. pulled him over in a police car. Right, right, right. right. No, but, yeah. but even then, like, he got out of his car, which typically you would wait, but he notices this is not a police officer, and he's approaching my car with this giant equipment, like, what appears to be an oxygen tank. It's very much not an oxygen tank. It's compressed air, folks. Do not let him put that little pipe up to your head. It's so scary. It's such a practical murder weapon. I want to range on that. Yeah, and the fact that he, like, blows off the freaking locks of doors, it's just so cool. It is so cool. Like, yeah, it's terrifying. Egg. It's this giant, like, lumbering tank, and it doesn't look like it'd be efficient, and it's the most efficient killer ta- of all I love time. it because he has the, like, the, not the physique, I don't even know how to say this, like, the embodiment or, like, the character, the way he carries himself is like Bane. I fear nothing, you know, which is so terrifying. Oh, it's my like gosh. The, it's like the do you oh, feel yeah. in charge You want to talk about a vibe, scene, yeah. The, the pharmacy scene where he's been injured and he just methodically, like, slowly takes out part of this cloth of the shirt, puts it into the gas cap, pulls it back out, lights it on fire, calmly walks into the pharmacy, and the car just explodes behind him in front of the pharmacy, shattering all the windows. It's, it is such a crazy scene. The way they have the tracking shot, all of, like, this, it appears to be one take. It's just, it's so masterfully done like you want to talk about suspense and payoff it's like a car exploding in a lot of films does like almost nothing for me emotionally speaking but that one i go back and watch that scene nothing is said he just simply pulls out this this shirt or you know part of a cloth lights it on fire walks into the pharmacy gets what he needs because there's a huge diversion that's happening behind him it's it's so crazy how it all works like I could just gush all over this film, and I'm going to right now. <laughs> it's amazing. This movie is so good. I love this movie. Holy cow. Uh, everyone needs to see this movie. This is an amazing film. Uh, just other things that I wanted to get to real quick. I, I love the idea that, like, the very beginning when Tommy Lee Jones is sharing his, his story about, like, this, this killer that ended up killing this 14-year-old girl, and he's like, I always knew I was going to kill should the right moment present itself and if I got free I would do it again and Tommy Lee Jones is just baffled by this and then all throughout the movie he's trying to get into the head you want to talk about L chasing light and and death note there's this great moments where when he talks about the milk that's left out on the counter on the coffee table and he goes it's still sweating which he's referring to the condensation that's appearing on the glass he's like we just missed him like he was just and the the detective's like oh man we got to put an APB out and he's like for what some guy that's recently drank milk like they, they missed their chance and Tommy Lee Jones is so aware of it but he's calm he doesn't allow himself to you know get emotionally driven he's like very methodical he's very smart I'd love it he sits down enjoys a glass of the same carton of milk and he's sitting and staring at the blank TV looking at his own reflection, just like Javier Bardem's character was just a moments before. And it's just so good at establishing, like, he's trying like he's trying to get into the headspace of a killer. He's trying to act like how he would. He's trying to think like he would. Where would he go if he was the serial killer? They're chasing down the money. And I love that, too. And he goes, maybe the money's gone. You know, maybe there wasn't any money. And he's like, but you don't like to believe that, would do you? Or whatever. And he's like, no, I do not. Like, I just love that. Like, he's an experienced sheriff. He's like, he knows the the evil workings of the cartels, of, of wicked men, of, of criminals. I just think that's so great. Like, holy cow. I want Tommy Lee Jones. Could you adopt me as your son? I would love to be your son. This is such a great performance from Tommy Lee Jones. Loved it. I love when his wife was asking him, like, don't, uh, he's like, don't uh, get hurt. I'll don't try not hurt. to. Uh, don't hurt other people. <laughs> if, whatever you laughs. say. Yeah, whatever, whatever you say. You say. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. 
Oh my gosh. And oh, one thing that really blew my mind was that Josh Brolin was like sleepless, not because he was excited about the money, but he felt bad about the guy that he left alive, starved for, for or thirst, you know, dying of thirst for, for water. And he goes back there to give him water, and that's how he gets found out about these other cartel guys. And I forgot about this whole scene where he literally nearly gets killed in this terrifying pit bulls chasing him down in the water. That scene is yeah, so Yeah, oh my gosh, it reminds me of, like, the Revenant. <laughs> to try, trying to get the bullet loaded. He's, like, blowing into the, the gun so it doesn't jam on him, and the, and the gun doesn't misfire or it doesn't fire at all. That is the <laughs> freakiest dog I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it holy just chases shiz. him all the way down that fetching river. That and then that that pant pant <laughs> It runs at him, and he literally shoots it as it falls yeah, on the, him. Yeah, that like, dog is like, almost as deterred as the guy in Bone Tomahawk, <laughs> the crawling golem guy, <laughs> almost. <laughs> crawling golem guy? You mean Patrick Wilson's character for his yes, wife? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's a scary... Those two are the two scariest people you'd never want to encounter. Oh, yeah. But I, would, I was thinking Jason Statham lying on the ground. Or that, yeah, that looks... Yeah. <laughs> That's a top... That's a top Most top menacing put-down animals of all time, Jason Statham in Wrath of Man. <laughs> <laughs> And this dog. And this dog. Dude. Oh, my Cross gosh, that, guys. Like, pit bull Ruttweiler or whatever it is. Oof. I got to say, uh, as far as trackers go in the bag at Satchel of Money, I feel like that's a rookie mistake. I, I In every movie now, I'm always like, if they have a bag of money, I'm like, change bags, check all the bills, check for mark bills, check for trackers. Yeah. Do something. And they never do. And then, like, when he freaking finds it in there, like, oh, my gosh, it makes my heart jump. And that whole scene at the hotel. That's right. When he's under, he, he's, like, underneath the freaking door. You're like, oh, shit. I know. When you see the light curl. It, again, see, it's so well done. They, they could have cut it a million times. They could have made it all action-y. They just let the scene play out. And it, it's just it's just terrifying. And, the, and then it just takes off with a bang where unexpectedly the freaking lock from the fetching door hits him in the chest josh roland's character like it's just so unreal and the blast through the door have like that silent shotgun he had yes. was so bad like, talk about the most yeah the most op muzzle, weapon like, of all time muzzle. that muzzle is like silent yeah that shotgun. muzzle is like Those a giant like, like can <laughs> i'm like what the fudge that is not a freaking like muzzle or silencer so awesome. bro. it's a can on the end of your shotgun some of the most merciless things where he just has no regard for life he shoots the guy in that shower pulls the curtain back to not bloody himself blows the guy away in the shower it was so good like holy crap um, that sound is so scary too like the yeah it's like a like the the air is getting shot out that's oh, so crazy so crazy it, it's a uh, this movie guys i gotta say is just unbelievably uh, terrifying awe-inspiring and it's just it's all the things it makes you feel so many things check this movie out guys if you have not seen it if you're listening to this podcast right now you have not seen no country for old men it's not for the pain of heart except for this you is mom a violent movie yeah, those are the only two people I'd recommend not watch it. But if you want to watch a, a grizzly spaghetti western set in modern day, I, I guess by modern I just mean, I mean, when is the set? Is like 90s, 70s, maybe? 80s, 90s? Maybe even 80s. But like a past 80s. I feel like it's definitely almost feels like a 90s film somehow, but maybe earlier. But Well, does anyone does anyone have cell phones? I'm trying to think. That's the thing. To me, it still feels timeless because of where it's set. It almost feels like it could still be modern day. I know that sounds like un realistic just because of the trucks they drive and everything but it, yeah the, the car that that one guy in texas is driving it's well, clearly that old uh, tracker the beep beep yeah yeah even the, the beeping tracker yeah it does have a very feel of much earlier maybe 60s 70s or not 60s but maybe like 70s 80s 70s, 80s yeah but i i would almost want to look i wonder if they they don't have i'm looking for a time they don't technically say it it just says rural texas gun runners or drug runners and stuff like that but yeah there's just nothing i love the idea of stumbling upon all this money like like what would you do i mean it's this is like the adult version of millions you know <laughs> when you're that kid that discovers a big giant pack pile, pile of money you're like this is going to be sweet and it's the worst thing that could ever happen to this guy's life you know and you're thinking it'd be super sweet and it could have all been fine if not a good samaritan wanting to go back and try to make up for it this truck then gets discovered. It's just so, my goodness, my goodness. And, and, and that's so Coen Brothers, too, where they have a character that makes a decision that's actually a mistake, and it just throws the whole plan out of whack. Like, Josh Brolin's going to be sitting sweet for the rest of his life. That's the real plot of this other, other movie. But he's a, he's, he's a semi-decent guy by the fact that he actually goes back and feels bad about the cartel guy that was left there that needed water that was still alive. I, it, 
if he never went back, if Ellie never went, this, none of this movie would have happened. And it was like out of a, out of pity, out of whatever, some moral part of him bought his, himself was like, I should go back and check on that guy. And it just puts this whole movie in motion. Cartels well, get back on his trace. Good guy doesn't pay off, and it gets you. It doesn't killed. pay off. Nice guys finish last, but in the end, it's <laughs> well, so he, tragic he because still he's was at the stealing hotel. Money, but so it's not exactly he was like innocent. I, I, no, exactly. Like, everyone is kind of like, I, I love that part about it. Like, Woody Harrelson's character coming in, like, he's this big shot. He's like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Even the characters that... Absolutely that say, blown away. Yeah, even the most innocent characters of this movie get faced with, with Javier Bardem. Like, I always think about that oh, gas that station. that final scene. So sad. The... With uh, the girl. Which one? And she's like, you don't need to do this. Yeah. They always they say always that. Say Why do they that? always say the same thing? Thinking it's going to help, you know. Oh, my gosh. Do we know if it... it are we to assume that he killed her? Yes. Is that what... Yes. I don't think there's a... Can we address those kids on those bikes that were probably scared out of their fetching by? They're just like... Oh, that effing bone. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Bone sticking <laughs> out. <laughs> That accident, too, just comes out of nowhere. And then he wraps his arm up, pays the kid the bloody dollar, the $100 or whatever for his shirt. Oh, it's just so crazy. So he can make a sling for his mangled arm. I don't think that's one he's going to be, be able to treat at the corner farmer's market. Maybe, I don't know. That's why I love this movie. It's ambiguous. And it's so good. For all intents and purposes, we think he gets away. By the skin of his teeth, maybe. But with the protruding bone out of his fetching arm, dude, it's so gross. <laughs> Holy cow. I love it too when he's like, hey man, like half of that's mine. He goes, no, I, I paid with my own shirt or something like that. I can't remember what the kid says, but he's like, you're not the one that gave up your shirt, man. I love that. That's right, kid. You earned that money. But you also aided and bedded a serial killer. And you feel so much empathy for him in that moment where you're like, oh, I feel so bad for this person. He just got into an accident. He's clearly in a lot of pain. And you're like, do you have any idea how many people he's mercilessly killed? Like, this is a serial killer for all intents and purposes. Like, Depraved with, with, serial yeah, killer. With no, Malicious. With no motive. Do we think this is the greatest movie villain? Uh, I, I, that's interesting that you say that because I'd say Heath Ledger's Joker is pretty close, but I would say this is right up there. Like, I have no problem saying yeah. top five easily, maybe top three. I have to think of good movie villains. Like, who do I absolutely hate and I love to hate? He's one of them, but I'm almost awe inspired by him. So, him, Heath Ledger's the Joker. Throw out another one. Can you guys think of another one? I think so. I always think of the president's wife in 24. You remember that, that yes. nagging lady? Oh, my gosh. She was great. Or Logan. President Logan was pretty bad, too. I don't know. Uh, in in, <laughs> in Glorious <laughs> what's his name, is really good. Ooh, Christoph Waltz. Yeah, good. Christoph Waltz is good, so good. Good idea. Yeah, stick to movies. Let's put yeah, those but he's, three. He's more comedic. Like, he is... Uh, uh, Dude, Comedic when strangle. he strangles the girl, Jordan? With no hesitation? Yeah, just... yeah. I, I'm with Cameron. No, I know, he, but he I'm still rooting good. for him. Like, this guy, I don't root for him at all. Like, it's somebody you're rooting for him. I'm never fun. rooting I'm for never Christoph rooting. I'm you're rooting, rooting for the SS yeah, general? What's psychopath. You, <laughs> I'm, only you, rooting for, <laughs> I'm only rooting for fetching uh, Aldo, Aldo Rain, Rain, baby. Aldo Rain. Yeah, I, Aldo, I don't mean Aldo. rooting in the sense that I hope he kills more Jews. What I'm saying is <laughs> I'm, I'm, you're I just folks. like his... Uh, like his character is so much fun because he's making you laugh. No, like, see, to, to, to be fair, Jordan, I think my favorite you laugh. I think my favorite villains are the ones that are charismatic. Like Heath Ledger was still very charismatic in a very dark sense. Oh, like make a pencil point. disappear. He's having a lot of fun. He's laughing. He's manic. Javier Bardem laughs the least, which is why I think he's one of the more menacing and more intriguing because he doesn't seem to enjoy it at any one moment. Like even where he's strangling that guy. I've never seen an actor's look so menacing before. Like, I think it is the most menacing I've ever seen anyone. Like, strangling that poor cop and then, like, seeing all the scuff marks of his shoes, like that pan down from his cowboy boots, like, with all those scuff marks, just hundreds of scuff marks all over the floor. It's so, it's so unnerving. And, like, drinking milk, like, sitting in your living room drinking your milk, like, just willy-nilly, like, he's not in any rush. The only person that's scarier than Javier Bardem is the lady that refuses to give the work information for Josh Brolin's character. Because she does not seem to care that there's a serial killer that comes in and is like, I need to know where he works. And she's like, I can't give out information of my tenants. Like, like she was not faced by him at all. And he, like, looks at her like, I'll kill you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, you're like, too unfazed. inconvenient to be killed right now. He's like, you're just <laughs> annoying. so funny. Yeah, dude, her sass, her sass saved her life, her bro. Probably. And then, oh my gosh, the Ooh, gas You know what this, this character reminds me of is Billy Bob Thornton in Fargo season one. Yes. Very reminiscent of that. Very Which again, similar. Fargo was the Coen brothers' invention. And then obviously, I think they directed some of those episodes, right? But yes, Billy Bob Thornton's character very much when, 
when uh, Tom Hanks' son pulls him over the detective and he's like, let's just say, you know, you pull me over, the best thing you could ever do is just let me go right now and not ask any questions because years from now, you'll think your lucky star is that you didn't do anything rash or foolish. So, like, he clearly threatened him in this long roundabout way, but, like, you believed it when he said it, right? Yeah, I think also Jack, Jack Nicholson from The Shining's up there as well. Yeah, well said. Again, yeah, great villain. See, put all those in the top five. There you go. See, yeah. it's hard when you narrow it to three, but yeah, top five, I think we just narrowed it down, and that I would I would agree with all of that. So, Do you guys have any other things that you wanted to say? or, or Well, as or a person who loves violence, like I got to say these are some of the most satisfying deaths I've ever seen in a movie. Oh, Holy shiz. cow. Yes. And the only one I would say after first watching... Josh Brolin's death. I mean, come yeah. on, man. I didn't see what happened. Yeah. He's at a hotel, that's a and he's starting to be unfaithful. That one moment with, without his wife there, and I'm like, naughty, naughty, that's why you die. Yeah, I honestly, it shows restraint from the directors. I think it's, I mean, I that's the craziest thing they did. It apart from other filmmakers, because they know when to show things and when not to. Absolutely. See, and that's and, what and, I think, this is why I think this, see, movies like this, when you hold that restraint, it makes it, like, a better film and a worse movie because then movie goers are going to be like, oh, that kind of sucked. Like, I think like, yeah. they're not going to enjoy it. But then like as a film, you're like, holy shiz, like that is masterful to like be that patient and that like, like holding back to where you're like, you know, I'm not going to show you. I'm going to let like y- you've seen this man in action. You can imagine what the fudge has happened and what the frick he would do to people. So like, y- well, and they just made it timeless compared to, oh, what what yes. are people going to enjoy in the moment? Yeah. It's yes. like, who cares? Down the right. road, people will be talking about this film forever. Exactly. Exactly. They they literally immortalized it. We're like, remember that Western with the craziest shootouts all throughout the movie, but at the end, there wasn't one? And it was literally a very quiet, really sad and depressing monologue delivered by Tommy Lee Jones. Like, so earnest, by the way, sharing his dream. I, so I, I had a few thoughts about that. Like, I watched a lot of video essays about that as well. But I love the idea that, like, the very beginning, he's talking about this journey where he's, like, he's not finding his place anymore. And he's like, I don't know if I belong in this in this world or I can't do what I do anymore. That is so sad because, again, he's a detective that's trying to help people. And in the end, he's like, I've stared in the face of evil. Like, I, like he's chased the most depraved serial killer of all time, and he ends up getting away. It's It almost reminds me of Zodiac where you're like, can the story really end this way? You have to have some comeuppance, but it's like, yeah, but it's like evil just real. continues to exist. Yeah, it's not real. Like, this is the most yeah, real movie I've every, seen yeah, in a every, long time. And that's yes. what I talked to Grant about, too. That's why I love the scene where they don't show it. It's because, like, I told him, I'm like, a lot of people have unsatisfying deaths. Like, that's what I love about war movies, when you just see, like, people die in the saddest way. It's like, oh, he died because he broke his ankle, and then he got infected, and he died. And you're like, he didn't die in battle. It's like, no, he died like that. Or it's like, oh, he got shot in the back of the head by his own guy. And you're like, oh, my gosh. Like, Needless death, right? Man. Well, I was just going to mention that I feel like he's also, the whole title, No Country for Old Men, just the idea that he was talking about his past generations and, and what would they think of today. And I just, the idea that this guy is kind of almost, I, I don't want to say ahead of his time because that sounds weird, but he is like he's a villain yeah. that in that era just people weren't ready for it. Like, yeah, yeah, like, uh, like how everyone was well, so trusting. You, you, right? and you was, always had motives. You didn't had to have even, motives, yeah. too. And this guy's exactly. just like, he just, it was like the Joker. He just enjoyed just murdering and just chaos. He's just like, I don't care. I'll just literally murder yeah. you and, if and you're in even, my way. And even, even the character that knew most about it, like remember when Woody Harrelson goes to Josh Brolin and is like, you don't know who you're messing with. This guy is a cold-blooded killer. Even he, who has Javier Bardem's character pinned down the most still gets bettered by him right like that's the point like he he should know how evil and maniacal and methodical he would be and he was still bested by javier bardem tommy lee jones never once questions again he's just a, it's just it reminds me when i watched the mind hunter mind hunters i think it is the tv show yeah don't spoil. i enjoyed some of it I'm because watch it. Uh, it's from the pilot episode they basically serial killer didn't exist it wasn't a term and that's where they actually figure out they're like there are people that are so messed up. Like, this is what they get off on. Like, this is what they do. And, and again, like you said, Jordan, it's like, it was unthinkable. He's like, like the guy in Texas, he like gets out of his car and he's like, what's going on? Like, you're, you're impersonating it. Or like, he probably had no reason to believe this guy was going to harm him, but he gets out of his car and he's just like, he does nothing to defend himself. And he puts the cow de- air compressor right up to his head, you know, like, doesn't back away, doesn't think anything's wrong until the moment his head is caved in. <laughs> like, like it, it's crazy. Like, this movie, like you said, ahead of his time, Javier Bardem is a sick, evil person that I think a lot of people are just naturally 
good people would never suspect. And that's what makes them so sad. Yeah, that those people weren't ready for it. Exactly. And only the, the some of the more depraved, mean people that, that leached off in life that somehow got... Like, the, the gas station tenant is one of my favorite. Like, the guy did nothing wrong for all intents and purposes. But somehow everything he was saying was making him more likely to be killed. Like, yeah, he like, just like, kept saying like stupid, stupid just, stuff. Yes, like, yes. Like, when he was telling him, like, where are you coming from? Like, it sounds suspicious when you think about it because you're like, are you on to me? Like... You can't know where I'm coming from. Like, I've come and killed a lot of people from where I come from. Yeah, but he's and literally he's just like, being a friendly just Texan. A friendly, just he's like, trying yeah. to be a friendly Texan. Yeah, how just are you coming nice. from? How's, like, how's it going? And he's just like, And just everything he said just made him more likely to be killed in that moment. Like, you're like, please stop speaking. Please, <laughs> please, please stop, stop speaking. speaking. He's like, it's the, for your the, own the safety. Where he's like, well, we got to close soon. He's like, what time do you close? And he's like, oh, we got to close around, uh, like, right about now. Now it's not yeah. a time. What time? <laughs> what time do you close? Like, <laughs> what? when it's dark 9 30 you just you just like stop talking just well, it's too late though you're like i guess we're just in this train wreck and we're gonna have to watch it play out and i just watch that scene all the time i think it's one of the best interchange like the most even though i know technically he doesn't get killed it's still the scariest dialogue at the very end when he leaves him the coin too and he's like no don't put it in your pocket anywhere with your pocket because then you'll put it in the cash drawer it'll get lost with all the other change it's just it, it's and just like all the other coins which it's not Although it is one of the other coins, but it's not. <laughs> like, he has no idea that that fetching coin toss saved him his fetching yeah. life. It's that's one of coins. easily the best scenes in cinema. I uh, just, yeah, it's that, that so was his, That was his ticket to freedom. He didn't. It, it, that was his ticket to like, life. It's like it, oh. it reminds me of like the Joker meets like the Harvey Dent. You know, where it's like you flip, flip a, coin, a coin, it's like it's out of my hands. So he's like, I'm just going to let it play out. And like the idea that he tell uh, my favorite line, just that whole dialogue. I I should have written down more of it, but I love when he's just like. You know what year is on that coin? He's like, I don't know, sir. He's like, the year on the coin. He's like, it was like eighteen fifty two or, or like nineteen fifty two or something like that. He goes, and it's been traveling all this way, and now it's here, and now you need to call it. It's the craziest line. Like, again, takes me back to one hundred twenty seven hours where he's talking about the boulder. He's like, this has been sitting here. It came as a little bit of meteorite, and it's been sitting on planet Earth, waiting for me to this moment where I fall in this canyon and get my fetching hand stuck. Like, is it destiny? Is it fate? Like. That whole interchange where he has with this guy, it's like, he is going to live or he's going to die. And and Javier Bardem does not give two flying fudges whether or not he kills this guy. Like, it's no skin off of his nose. It's so intense. Like, and like you said, with the wrapper, like the squished candy wrapper, and it's just like, <laughs> like stretching across the table. That just makes me so unnerved. Like, it's so good. Well, like, and there, there was just two more choices I was going to mention that the directors made that I think set this pitch film even further apart from others is no music they only use sound oh my gosh yes that is a genius choice like it, but it, very risky because it, people can get yes, bored yeah. and that's yeah it's like it's like totally well, think, speaking like that's you need these suspenseful it, music yeah. right but no that sound of the shotgun going off the it, floorboards that's why I think creaking it doesn't make it a very enjoyable movie but an amazing film that's that's fair but again i, oh, I enjoy oh, it no, more now i wish see, more movies no, but did see, yeah. but we're film yeah. nerds and so that's what like we, why we enjoy it so much but versus like ty if you show this just to anybody they'd be like okay like, yeah, to be fair, I show this to I show this to a lot of people. Yeah, and they don't seem to like it or appreciate it. As yeah, much they're as like, I oh, like, it's all right. I need I clearly need new friends. That's all I think yeah. every time I do that. <laughs> well, and the, the second choice is having Roger Deakins uh, filming. I think he's such a good cinematographer. I seriously, every shot in this movie is so beautiful. Oh yeah, even though it's a desert, dude. I love just... I love the opening scene, like when you see, or not the opening scene, the scene where um with uh what's his name. Royland, Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin. Yeah, when you just like, I love that. Also known as Thanos. Yeah, I, I love. I, I am inevitable. I love just like kind of like you're talking about Jordan, like the cinematography and like the the far away shots, because then it just sets us like even the ones where he's like going down the river, just the feeling, because he just like it's like the the shining Jordan where you just like all of your attention's on that, yet you're still like soaking in all of the like the background, but you're just like, oh my gosh, there's so much like riding on this moment. Yeah. Well, and uh, Ty, in case you don't know what movies he did, he did 1917. He's also done Blade Runner 2049. He did the cinematographer and he- Oh, the cinematographer for this movie. This movie. Yeah. And he did Skyfall. He's done- 2049 makes a lot of sense when you say that now. Like the very long, stoic, yeah, it's- He did Sicario. Just his, his shots are so good. Yeah, holy cow. And again, such a great job at telling stories through visual narrative. 
I love Josh Brolin at the beginning, like, investigating the crime scene where he's, like, like, he goes in, finds the one guy alive, and he's, like, do you know where the last man is? I love, he, like, Josh Brolin's already thinking about the money. He's, like, someone got away with the money. Is he still around here somewhere? And then, like, finding, he's, like, where would I go if I was him? It's, like, I gotta go find shade. And then he finds the tree, and then he watches the tree to try to see if his movement checks his watch. Again, without saying, like, saying anything, it's, like, you understand narratively what he's doing. Like, show him looking at his watch. He's timing to see how long the guy sits there. If he sits there a suspiciously long time, like hours, he can go up and approach him, believing that he's probably dead or at least not conscious, right? So fetching good. <laughs> and just all, all the dead bodies in this movie. It's terrifying. Like, any minute, I'm like, oh, one of them's going to jump or lurch at him. Like, I don't remember what happens. Opens the car door, and there's still a guy fetching alive inside. <laughs> oh, jeez. Like, point your gun at him. Like, <laughs> Close the, the door. I Lobos. <laughs> I no, Lobos. ain't no Lobos. Ain't no Lobos. <laughs> but then, what does he say? That coyotes don't eat Mexicans. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was funny. Um, there's some, some great lines in this movie. One of my favorite lines is from, he's like, you don't mind writing <laughs> or something like that. Like he's shotgun, talking about yeah. the shotgun, but riding, riding passenger. I don't know why I thought that was so funny. <laughs> riding like I've never heard that. <laughs> it's like That's so Texan. What? Who's ever called? Yeah, Texan. It's so funny. Love it. The the milk's still sweating. I, or he said like I can't remember how he I, said I, it. But I, yeah, he's like the glass is still sweating. I thought that was great. I love too when he's like he's like just how Perspiring. dangerous is he? And then like Carson Wells, he's like. Compared to what? The bubonic plague? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. That's great, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh man. This is I movie, love the dude. two when he's like he's like, Are you gonna shoot me? He's like, That depends. Do you see me? And I'm just like, Oh, fetch it. I don't see shiz, man. I'm blind. I'm like, get the fudge out of here. I just remembered so for those of you that are still listening to this that haven't heard it, again, I just wanted to give a quick plot recap. It's just the violence and mayhem ensue after a human stumbles upon a drug deal gone wrong and more than two million dollars in cash near the Rio Grande. So it just this is a drug deal that goes wrong. Josh Brolin stumbles upon all this money and he's on the run from both the cartel and Harvey Bertem, who is a cold blooded serial killer that's just out for the money and will kill and stop at nothing to kill anyone that gets in his way. And it's just so amazing. This movie is two hours, two minutes, too short. I could watch a four-hour movie of this. Easily. I could watch a ten Netflix ne- episode series of this. The way it's shot, the slow... As it, long as it, the Coen Brothers. Well, it, it was. It, it was it was Fargo. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Yeah. Like, it is very reminiscent of all the Coen Brother things that I love. But again, just that dry desert feel, the the dust, the cowboys, the hats. Yeah, the so the Coen Brothers shirts, are the exact opposite jeans. with the Fargo, with the, the cold, like, yeah. snowy blizzard feel. Where you're just like, oh, man. But again, even with all the puffy jackets, like, everyone's seeing so Still friendly feels... and bubbly. You see really dark. Yeah, there's, like, this dark, seedy underbelly of, like, yeah, it's just, really pleasant just on the surface, cold. but really dark. Yeah. Yes, cold. And it's yes. funny because the first kill, the first murder is in the basement. So it's, like, kind of underneath all of that warmth and like mm-hmm. down in the basement of everybody is that monster inside them i love it cameron look at you pulling out all these film anecdotes look at you you're a real film critic cameron i try <laughs> any last minute thoughts i just want to say do i recommend um, this movie not for Hell the faint yes. of heart but absolutely i think this is the most important movie of all time i really do I think this is going to be one of those movies that people agree discuss to disagree. Not talking about it, I think it needs to be seen. I would push it upon kids in school. I would have loved to have watched this movie in school. Holy crap! Kids throw in out school. Your pu- throw out public education. Just watch the third. Just this will educate your kids. I want I want thirteen year olds to be mimicking this, <laughs> and then see who you have more in common with. Hopefully, it's not about Javier Bardem. If you have any <laughs> yeah. kids that are finding Javier Bardem to be extremely relatable. Have them removed from society. <laughs> <Have> them <laughs> removed. What is that from? <laughs> I want uh, that man I'm removed. Thinking of, I'm thinking of Jim Gaff again when he's like, the, oh, the yeah. commandments from God it should, progressively it, got harder yeah. and harder. I need you to build this altar. I need you to build an ark. I need you to cut off part of your... <laughs> <laughs> I want that man and removed. Like, and then he's like, yeah, well, we could have no bacon. Or no, he's like, how about no pork or no pigs or whatever? He's like, I don't know. I like bacon. What about you? How about we cut a part of our... <laughs> it's like, yeah. okay, we'll go with no bacon. And I want that. <laughs> that is funny. Jim Gaffigan did so great. So I would say yes. This yes, is a hard definitely yes. recommend. Especially if you're a film top 10 nerd. Now, so. Yeah, film nerd at all. Absolutely need to watch it. Yes. Had to talk about a Coen Brothers film. If you like any of Quentin's stuff or any of the Coen Brothers stuff, gotta watch. Just love it. Or if you just like a good thriller, goodness gracious, if it's oh not. Oh, my word. Yeah, yeah try watching yeah, it. Yeah, if you're not on the edge of your seat, you're not watching it right. <laughs> There's so little dialogue, too, dude. It's crazy. 
And when there oh, is yeah. dialogue, it counts. Holy shiz. Not many wasted words in this movie. Amen. 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 Watch this movie. It's right. Yeah, for an R, the only, it's just the violence. So if yeah. that doesn't bug you, yeah, all the other no, stuff yeah, is pretty I'm tame. Sure there's no nudity. <laughs> yeah, I looked at the uh, quotes. If you go to IMDb, they have the entire gas station <laughs> back and forth. It's just so Yeah, unreal. it's the first one, yeah. But that, what is the most you ever lost in a coin toss? It's just so good. And it, it's just so dumb. What, sir? I don't understand. I couldn't say. You're like, just stop talking. Like, it stresses me out when I watch it. <laughs> You're a bit deaf, aren't you? You're a bit deaf, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, he just insults him, too, and, and chokes on his, and his <laughs> snacks when he tells him he married into it. He's like, you married into this? <laughs> Why is that so good? He just hates him so much. Oh, my gosh. I need to understand what I have to gain. Everything. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You stand to win everything. Call it. You ask him to call it like eight times and he just refuses to do it. Oh my gosh. It's so great. Love it. Love it. I've got a beef to pick with Vince Summer. Love this film. So good. I just have trauma. I have trauma that I need to <laughs> dump out. <laughs> I have emotion. I have emotion. Love this movie. Check this out. Oh, and just real quick, I just couldn't help but notice Lewin was the name of Josh Boland's character. When we think inside Lewin Davis, and I'm like, is there a Coen Brothers universe at play here where like every single character and nod has a nod to another movie? Maybe they all take place in the same universe. I totally could believe it and buy it because Coen Brothers, all their movies are fetching grounded, even though they're like really funny and fantastical in their own sort of way. They're just so real. And even when they're hyper unreal, they're real. Like The Big Lebowski. It's like a fantasy, but and yet it's still so freaking grounded. Coen Brothers, you are doing amazing work. Please put me in one of your movies. I will be an Indeed. extra. I will do anything. I'll fetch your man. Just please put me in one of your movies. I should Gosh, stop why saying are you that. quoting Mandy? I hate you. Because <laughs> that line will never not be funny, dude. Yeah, it won't. <laughs> oh, Nick Cage ties making a new movie. I'm like, kind of excited. Are you serious? I should be surprised. What? What is it? Pig 2? No, it's like ghost something. Ghost something. Ghost story 2? <laughs> Can we have a 10 minute scene of somebody eating pie? <laughs> All right, guys, everybody, this is Future Hidden Movie Gems. Leave us an email, futuremovies at gmail.com. Love this movie. Just had to throw that out there again. Check us out on Spotify. Check us out on Patreon. You can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, all the other social media platforms. Like us, share us, leave us a five star review, and push this to all your friends. Post that you're listening to our podcast. It really helps. I think. Otherwise, we're just screaming at the ether, and that's okay with me, because if no one listens to this podcast, the world will know, and it's on record, forever and ever, that I love this movie, and I don't think that'll ever change. Everybody, this has been Future Hid Movie Gems, signing out. Peace. Bye. Peace. Call it.